What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I have not seen the movie. I haven't had the time, but I also, Brian, nobody has told me, yo, you gotta go see it. So I have chilled and done the other stuff that I do and just waited. You saw it, Brian. And I don't care if you spoil it. Let me know what your thoughts on the Transformers film, because we were hyped about this, Brian, like really hyped. So I want to hear your honest thoughts on what you thought of this film and did it live up to that hype and excitement that we were waiting for? Um, did it live up to the hype? I would say no. I was very entertained. I There are parts of this that I feel like are moving us toward where I want the Transformers movie to truly be. I don't think we're all the way there yet, but I do think we took steps forward in this movie that were important. Um, I would say, if you're not aware of the big reveal at the end, I don't know that we'll ever get the Transformers movie that you and I probably want, because it seems like they want to go in a little different direction. <laughs> So I don't know if you're aware of the spoiler or not, but I'll, I'll spoil it in a few minutes. What I liked is I liked that this movie, more so I think than any other Transformers movie, understood that the robots were the stars. And they got us to the Maximals and they got us to the Terracons and they got us to the G1s faster and they gave them more to do. Now, I don't think we got as far as to say that the Transformers or the Maximals were amazingly developed characters. That will be the day. But this was the first time, and you could see a little bit in the trailer, this was the first time where I felt there was effort given to the dialogue of the robots to actually have them move the story forward as opposed to the humans are driving the entire story and, oh, look, there's a giant robot here and a giant robot there and let's have a fight. So Prime actually has sort of an arc. Like they they took the G1 story of the crash on Earth and they made it so that he felt guilty and responsible for their inability to get back home in the ensuing years they had been there. I thought that was interesting. At least gave him like an emotional, a little something to make him behave a little differently than the Optimus Prime that we know, although he ultimately gets to where you'd expect him to get to as a hero. I thought Optimus Primal was actually interesting too, because he had been on Earth for a very long time. And so he brings a contrasting viewpoint effectively showing the, the goodness of humanity, whereas Prime has become more suspicious of humanity. Again, was it fully fleshed out? No. But there's a few moments where I was like, yeah, you're, you're, I think you're headed in a good direction here if you did more of it. Um, you know, Mirage was kind of similar, but it was more Pete Davidson doing Pete Davidson things. That just depends on whether you like that or not. Michelle Yeoh actually has a decent amount to do. She's really the maximal who talks the most as Air Razor. And so you kind of have some some sympathy or empathy with that. So like, again, it's like these fragments of like, ah, we're, we're getting there, but we're just not all the way there. I did think though, and I sent you this article, I did think that the, that the, the animations look good. I thought the transformations looked good. I thought the beasts looked good. The action, for the most part, I thought the physics looked, you know, pretty compelling. There's still a little bit too much of the Michael Bay, like blow everything up um, at times. But I do think Stephen Cable makes a comment in this article about the VFX where he wanted them to look more like the toys and more like, the and I think that's evident. You definitely see transformations and sequences where you're like, this reminds me of like a big budget version of the car what the cartoon would have done, not what Michael Bay wanted them to be over the you know over the last 15 years. So I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, in a way, you know, obviously we've been complaining about VFX and a lot of these other projects. I thought for the most part, VFX was a strong suit of, of this film. It gets a little too computery at the end, as all these things tend to do. There's too much of like a CGI battle at the end, but but the some of the fights along the way I thought were were pretty compelling. Um, the human characters, take them or leave them. I mean, like Anthony Ramos, I know he's, he's trying to make his star turn with this franchise and with being the hood in Ironheart. And uh, he was fine. 
like he's just you know i don't know like i just it's fine it's it's not i don't think it's like a memorable performance uh, I don't know that there's like huge chemistry between him and Dominic Fishback. So like, I don't think either of them really like left a huge mark on this, but I do think the movie was basically like, look, I mean, the Transformers are the stars and like, let's let them be Transformers and do cool things. And, and I think that'll get you a fair, a fair way uh, down the path. So I would say entertaining. I do think the big screen adds a lot to movies like this. Um, I totally didn't know that this was like a 1990s period piece, by the way. <laughs> Like I was, yeah, I was reading the I article. Totally I was like, wow. That. And like, I was watching the movie and all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm like, oh, it's like a classic hip hop soundtrack. Like they're playing like all the greatest hits of like the 80s <laughs> and 90s rap. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's kind of cool. But I totally didn't know going in that this was like a 30 years ago type story. Um, so, you know, I think that's that. The Decepticons were underdeveloped. I mean, this was definitely an Autobot story. The Terracons, Scourge, they don't do much. Even Unicron, which is show more than you know you you you've seen and unicron has a voice like unicron talks like unicron is a character but again it's like if it was similar to my impression of the robots it didn't get all the way there it didn't get all the way to where we would probably want unicron to be but there's moments where you're like this is interesting and i wouldn't mind seeing seeing more um so that's kind of my like sort of impression of of the story now are you aware of the big reveal at the end or am i spoiling it for you now no, you're not spoiling it to me. I, I think I, I remember hearing something, uh, what, uh, G.I. Joe related. So, okay, so now you can tune out if you haven't seen it. So basically, Anthony Ramos' character, he's a soldier who's basically okay. washed out. And so that's how they justify um, him being good with electronics and handy in, in the fight. Although he does something at the end, which is completely unrealistic and I'll, I'll <laughs> rain on that in a moment. But after in the aftermath, he has been trying to get a job throughout the movie because his brother is sick and he's, he, he needs money to help his care. So he goes and interviews with, I think the actor's name is Michael Kelly. And you would know him if you saw him. Bald guy who's in House of Cards. He's in the Jack Ryan series. He's a that guy. And okay. they, they're doing an interview and Michael Kelly basically like reveals that he knows a ton about what's going on. He hands him a business card and then he flicks a hidden switch in the wall and you see what looks like G.I. Joe headquarters behind it. Well, you look at some futuristic military installation and he like <laughs> drops out of view and you see like what looks like one of the classic planes they had in the, in the cartoon, like being built on the floor of the hangar. And Anthony Ramos flips the business card over and the G.I. Joe insignia is on the back clearly signaling the intent to cross over the G.I. Joe franchise and the Transformer franchise, both of which belong to Hasbro uh, for the first time. So that's clearly what they want to do. What's your reaction to that? Because I, I have my concerns, but like, what is your reaction to them using this movie really as a launch pad to get to that? Do you mean with regards to just the G.I. Joe uh, characters or yeah, the, do you the, want to the see crossover? Movie? Do you want to see... So, like, you know, Michael Bay's Transformers movies had a lot of military involvement, right? A lot of U.S. military involvement. He And he has a close partnership with the military where they gave him access to vehicles and planes that no one else had access to. So now we're going to swap that effectively for the Joes and Cobra, presumably. Do you actually want to see a movie that is G.I. Joe and Cobra aligned with the Autobots and the Decepticons? I don't know if I want to see that next. I think that would be too much for the senses. I think uh, purely GI. I mean, if listen, the Marvel formula is there. It worked. Nobody has attempted what they've tried. They've tried. They tried to do it, but they did it so <laughs> haphazardly. Right. It didn't work out. I think if you ease into this, because again, remember. G.I. Joe got a ton of characters. You know, it's like you got to be very strategic on how many people you introduce or how you go about doing this. Um, I don't know. I think it's just... I think it's just a very difficult task to make this what they they think they can make it into. So, yeah, I, to me, it's too cluttered of a movie. Like, as I just said, like this movie attempted to give the robots a semblance of an arc, didn't get all the way there. There's no way you could do that in a movie where you have to share screen time with, I don't know, call it half a dozen Joes and half a dozen Cobra. 
it just feels too crowded. Again, why did Avengers pull it off? Because they had invested the time with the individual characters enough along the way to when you put them all in the movie together, you didn't need to give them all story arcs. They could kind of be a team and you know do that. I don't particularly understand why G.I. Joe hasn't worked other than like already, like they've tried this obviously three different times, right? They, there's G.I. Joe, there's G.I. Joe Retaliation, and then the Snake Eyes thing, all of which were disappointments at the box office, quite honestly. They, you know, they, mm. The first one made money, but it was a disappointment. Mm. But what I don't get about it is they keep I, they keep overthinking, to me, G.I. Joe. Certainly. Certainly. I, there's so many... Ca- you, some of the characters are not fit for big screen adaptations, but there's hundreds of them on each side. <laughs> You mm-hmm. just need a handful, right? Like Cobra Commander works. Like Baroness works. Like, you know, uh, Duke is fine. Like Lady J, Scarlet, fine. Like Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow. Like there's more than enough to where this should be a pretty faithful adaptation and look good and work pretty easily. And I don't get why Hollywood has been insistent on like we have to come up with these elaborate origin stories or elaborate like get away from the 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 essence of the cartoon to try to reinvent G.I. Joe. Just do G.I. Joe. Yeah. It can be done. It's just like you said, they overthink it and they just, you know, Michael Bay the hell out of it. Yeah, and but it's, it's like- just, there's no no story and no, no memorable characters, no nostalgic feeling of the G.I. Joe characters. Yeah, but, but again, like, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. I was just going to say like, there's so many military dramas and shows and movies that have worked and it's like it's gi joe's just that with cooler weapons and like funnier names like i don't it shouldn't be that hard like you should be able to make a really coolly staged action set piece that utilizes the advanced weaponry and skills of the individual characters but it can be black hawk down like it can be like the same basically the same premise of, of a movie like that you're just changing yeah. The bells and whistles. I, I but Hollywood just won't make that movie, and I don't know why. Yeah. But I'd rather see that versus let's go mash them up with Autobots and Decepticons right away, because I just think that will be a mess. Yeah, yeah, that that that, that will definitely be a mess, and that's something I probably wouldn't uh, be looking forward to see. But yeah, because it's just too much, too much. Uh. So what did this guy Anthony Rembers do at the end that was like so crazy? Okay, so this is the thing that like I I could sense it coming and then when it happened I was like, oh no. (laughs) So spoiler alert, he's obviously like they they make Mirage and Anthony Ramos' character Noah Diaz and make the two of them the equivalent of like what Bumblebee was to Haley Steinfeld or Shia LaBeouf in the other movies. They're the, the team. So Mirage sacrifices himself to save Anthony Ramos in the final battle. And then you find out that Mirage is still functional, but he's kind of damaged. And so he transforms himself onto Anthony Ramos to make Anthony Ramos a hybrid human transformer who can fight alongside Optimus Prime. And so he's like a human scale I'm out. version of himself, but he's in a suit that now has Mirage's powers. I'm out. And I saw it and I was like, no. Yeah, I'm out. I'll Too wait far. for it. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm not Too far. Because, it. And the thing that the thing that I, I was like, you didn't need it because you had Prime and you had the Maximals. And it's like, you didn't need the human to be able to fight with Transformer powers. It just wasn't mm. necessary. You lost me. I'm gone. I'm done. I'm not going to see that movie. I'll see it later, but not in the theaters. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that sounds very disappointing. I would have been disappointed to see in that in the movie theaters, man. That, that being said, have. though, the maximal animations confirm what we saw in the trailer. There is no excuse for Voltron not getting done and done by this effects house. Cheetar doesn't get that much to do, but like it's fluid, like and Air Razor in particular, who does get a lot to do, you're just like. There's no excuse. Roby, small yeah. drawn, it's easy now. Easy. If you guys are watching this, get me on board 
for the Voltron production. Because I would love to give you my thoughts on what that visually looks like. Because it can't be, I mean, what's that, what's that movie that Guillermo del Toro did? Pacific Rim. Um, Pacific Rim. That looked, man, fine. How do you top that? I don't know if you can, but I think just the nostalgic feeling of this is old snap Voltron is enough. Um, but you gotta you gotta certainly hit those marks to form the Voltron sword. You gotta do all those things. You gotta do all those little things. You gotta look at Super Mario Brothers and what they did. Correct. Do the all the little things that people stay connected to what they are used to or remember feeling and watching and understanding. You do that, you have a successful uh, a film like that. Yeah, and also, again, to your point, don't reinvent the wheel. Go to Planet Eris and make Planet Eris cool. Like, you try to do... I, I can already see the mistake where they're going, like, we got to put this on Earth. No! <laughs> Go to Planet Eris. We're much more interested in a new universe and galaxy. Look at all the people that want to escape to Pandora. Exactly. That's what you got to do. But yeah, let us know what you, I haven't seen it again. I'm not going to probably see it, but yeah. Brian saw it and where out of five you stars. Know, uh, it's, it's two and a half. You know, it's one of those where I would say like it, it, it entertain, it entertained me. The big screen added something. The transformers are still cool. The story is whatever. Like I said, that the finale defies belief. And then the GIO thing, you know, I'm more concerned than excited about it. Um, but it is a movie that goes by pretty quickly. So like, if Bumblebee is, you know, it's like it's probably the third best Transformers movie we've got. I would say like Bumblebee and the original Transformers are still the top two. Okay. I would slot this as the next movie. It's a good bit better than like Revenge of the Fallen, you know, or Age of Extinction or Last Night for sure. But I don't think it quite is. I think Bumblebee was a tighter movie, for example. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Let us, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Transformers film. Did it live up to the hype and your expectations of what the Transformers should be? And if you saw the movie and you saw the end credit scene, what are your thoughts on the whole G.I. Joe crossover thing, man? For me, I'm like, no. Listen, if you want these things, these big things to work like that, you gotta, you gotta make us care about that journey along the way and then but not nah, boom boom you can't give a street fighter yo you can't you can't a mortal con you can't do those things anymore they just don't work at least i don't think they can work but it is 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 how these these executives that are making these movies if they're the ones making these movies and they're only seeing dollar signs we're gonna see crap but if you see guys that are really like invested like a Kevin Feige sort of, you know what I'm saying? James Gunn saying coming out and they want to do these films, then we have something to be excited about. But just these Transformers G.I. Joe, this sounds crazy. You know, this this sounds like one of these ridiculous things that somebody on John Campion would say, that would be good. Transformers and G.I. Joe. Every, that's gonna, that movie's going to make a billion dollars. I don't know. It sounds like too much. But let us know in the comment section below, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!